when we look at Ecclesiastes 12, 7, that again, it says the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. What are some things that, that we could say that you guys would say looking at that verse now? And um, I mean, how would you see it now? Do you, do you look at that verse now and see any problems with how they use it? Yeah, I mean, I, I see a, I see a lot of problems, um, even from before that verse, from the very beginning. But I mean, if we want to start at Ecclesiastes chapter twelve or seven, um, if you read, context is key. Context is always key. And when you when you read Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, it's basically a euphemism of death, and that's what it's talking about. It's not something about talking about a past life that we once lived in heaven. It's more talking about the meaningless things of this world and how we're going to die. And, you know, for more, I, I think the best way to understand the Bible is with the Bible, because I could go on and on with my opinion. But, you know, I know the members watching, they're going to say, well, that's his word. What about what does the Bible say? Right. So when, you know, just uh, not going too far from there, if we look at a verse like here in, um, let's see. Zechariah chapter 12. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. It says, a, a prophecy, the word of the Lord concerning Israel. The Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays out the foundations of the earth, and who forms the human spirit within a person declares. So the Bible tells us God is the one who forms the spirit inside of a human being. That's what makes us alive. When the World Mission Society Church of God or the, the Mormon Church, when they, you know, the Mormon Church also uses Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. They use it to say that we, you know, pre existed. And what do they focus on? Literally, I'm getting flashbacks remembering sitting in the study room or teaching this subject and making them focus on the word return when we're in on Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. The spirit right. returns to God who gave it. And then they give you all kinds of examples. I remember I used to give an example. Could you return to somewhere you've never been before? Return means you have to go back to a place you've already been, a place of origin. And so, you know, they basically wordplay with you from the very beginning to make you think that we were once in heaven with God. And they use these, you know, verses as proof text. But the key is, you have to play into with what they're saying and agree to the, what their terms are and their explanation. But we need to take a step back and examine to see if what they're, you know, um, leading us to believe is actually in the text or not. And so in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse seven, that what the word return means, the definition isn't to go back to a place of origin. It could, it means to go back to either a place or person. Here, we understand that the person that the soul is going back to is the originator of the soul, which is God. And that's the purpose of this verse, not to tell you that you were once in heaven and that we pre-existed, but that God is the one who gave us our soul. And if we die and if our soul is taken from us, we no longer exist. And let's look at another verse real quick um, before I forget to mention it. In um, Job chapter 34, Job chapter 34, verse 14. As we're, and as we're turning there, what you're saying there is kind of the first thing that, that kind of came to my mind when I'm looking at Ecclesiastes uh, 12, 7, where, you know, it, it doesn't say the spirit returns to heaven. It says yeah. the spirit returns to God who gave it. So it seems like right, I mean, right there in the verse, uh, it pretty clearly says what you're you're communicating here, Edgar. Yeah. And, you know, just uh, here in Job chapter 34, this is, you know, close to one of the chapters that they use, Job chapter 38. In Job chapter 34, verse 14 through 15, it uh, gives more explanation on this topic. It says in verse 14... 
if it were his intention and he withdrew his spirit and breath, all humanity would perish together and mankind would return to the dust. So hmm. again, it's, you know, it's a more confirmation of the, the same thing that we're saying. The, the, the essence, the most important thing that these authors are trying to communicate is without the soul, we're just a pile of dust. Not that we pre-existed before, but you know, I want to pass the pass the mic down to Anthony. See what I know. He wants to add something to that. <laughs> well, I just also wanted to say that during the studies, a lot of times when I would say, you know, and where does God exist? You know, I I hated to leave them with that option because they yeah. would always say, "Well, oh, God is everywhere." And even in the book of uh, Jeremiah, you know, because I used to hate that answer because it's true. But in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24, it says, Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. So we can uh, say that God is everywhere. God is in heaven. God is on earth. Returning back to God, God gave us that breath of life in the womb and that's when you know when we come out when we're born but it's god is everywhere god is on earth god is in heaven so returning to god doesn't mean that we have to go back to heaven it just means that god gave us our soul and from our creator we return it doesn't mean that we have to go back to heaven yeah. in order for that to occur and so with that, uh, Psalm 139 would be another good place to go where it says, where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the winds of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall uh, hold me. So it's just, yeah, just reiterating that idea that God isn't contained to heaven alone, uh, it says even even in Sheol, if he descends to Sheol, he is there too. So you could just as easily say, you know, say, well, you know, if you follow the WMSCOG's logic, Ecclesiastes twelve seven says you're going to return to God. Well, it's, Psalm one thirty nine says God's in Sheol. So maybe maybe we're not going back to heaven. Maybe we came from Sheol originally. Uh, both both options are just as uh, equally on the table.